Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is in the U.S. after days of meetings with American leaders, but many are asking what the future holds for U.S.-Israeli relations, with President Obama pushing for even greater concessions to the Arabs. Shalom to Professor Eitan Gilboa. Shalom, Elliot. There's been a lot of talk about Netanyahu's trip to the U.S., but what actually happened in the meeting between the U.S. president and the Israeli prime minister? What happened is a, a polite meeting where the two sides agreed to disagree at this time. Uh, there are some disagreements between uh, Obama and Netanyahu on priorities uh, and ways to achieve mutual goals. Uh, the United States wants um, Israel to act on the Palestinian-Israeli uh, negotiations, wants Israel to freeze settlements and, um, and uh, allow more freedom of movement for the Palestinians in the West Bank. This is the most important thing for the United States. For Israel, the most important uh, item is uh, Iran's quest for nuclear weapons. Also, it seems that Obama has developed a pretty clear uh, grand design for the Middle East that includes uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict, Syria, and other areas. And um, it wants to sell that design to Middle Eastern leaders. It seems from what we have heard that Netanyahu was unable to change some of the basic features of that design. There was a lot of talk about the Obama administration taking a new tack in the Middle East, but it seems Israel and the Sunni Arab states aren't going along. What's really happening? I think that Obama uh, has changed uh, the main goal of U.S. policy in the Middle East. It is his goal to uh, appease and, and uh, pacify the Muslim and the Arab world. He wants a new page in American relations with the Muslim world because he thinks that this is the most effective way uh, of dealing with terrorism and nuclear proliferation. Um, it seems that this strategy uh, comes at the expense of Israel because Obama wants to show that the United States is somewhat distancing itself from Israel and is becoming more even-handed and therefore would be more acceptable to the Muslim and the Arab world. Do you think the U.S. will put even heavier pressure on Israel to kowtow on issues there is disagreement over, such as settlements and talk with the Palestinian Authority? I think Obama will tell Israel, this is my design. I expect you to cooperate with me Otherwise, you're going to be left out and you will have to pay some price. So I expect, yes, that if Israel does not comply with the American demands, that uh, a confrontation may arise and uh, one can only hope that Netanyahu drew uh, clear red lines which uh, any Israeli government cannot cross. In the coming weeks, Washington will be hosting Egyptian President Mubarak and the Saudi king. There's been a lot of talk that behind the scenes there is an alignment between Israel and the so-called moderate Arab states. What effect will this have on Obama's policies? Obama will continue to sell his design and to hear some responses from, middle, uh, from key Middle Eastern countries such as Egypt and Saudi Arabia. He is likely to hear that the main concern of the moderate Arab countries in the Middle East is like that of Israel, namely uh, the threat of nuclear Iran, which wants uh, to control uh, the entire Middle East. Uh, Obama hopes for uh, uh, Obama hopes to create an alliance of moderate Muslim Arab countries. Israel and other countries in the international community uh, primarily uh, to block Iran and uh, deal more effectively with threats 
of Islamic uh, fundamentalist terrorism. Is there any kind of idea of a personal rapport between the leaders? And how do you think the meeting, which ran longer than it was intended to, uh, bode for the future? I don't believe much in chemistry. I believe in mutual interests. If uh, two countries agree on interests, uh, chemistry is not important. And if they don't agree, chemistry is irrelevant. Uh, it seems that uh, Netanyahu and uh, Obama comes from very different ideological background. Uh, Obama belongs to the liberal, even radical, left of the Democratic Party. Netanyahu represents uh, the conservative right in Israel. You can't find a bigger divide between the two. However, both Obama and Netanyahu have shown in the past uh, uh, an ability uh, to overcome ideology and become pragmatic. And therefore, I believe that there is still uh, a, a big chance, uh, a great chance for cooperation between the two leaders based on interests and pragmatism. Do you believe it will be business as usual then between Israel and the United States? It's not going to be a business as usual because I believe that Obama is very different from uh, the two uh, last uh, presidents uh, occupying the White House, Bush and uh, Clinton, uh, for one reason only. Uh, the other two presidents had a kind of an emotional attachment to Israel. He is not emotional at all. He is very intellectual and very interest-oriented. And, and this, will, this will change his basic approach uh, to uh, problem-solving in American-Israeli relations. But I believe that there will be uh, still considerable cooperation between, between the two sides because both the United States and Israel are not interested in confrontation. It would not help them to realize their goals in the Middle East. And given uh, the pragmatism of the two leaders, they may be able to succeed in overcoming some of the disagreements surfaced yesterday. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor Gilboa. Thank you.